Cheers, cheers. Es valenciano. Es eh, valenciano, yes. Valenciano. Yes, from Spain. Cool. Oh, okay. Sooner or later, we'll pass by. I love Valencia. Lots of really? good people there. Cabanyal. Yes. 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 <laughs> Almost bought a house in Cabanyal. <laughs> oh. You must, you must think about <laughs> yes. it. Maybe it was not the right time uh, now. But maybe not the no, right no, time. No, no, hace 10 años. Hace 10 años casi compré una casa en Cabanyal. Pero fue como cuando subieron los precios ya, ¿viste? Que había oh. los humanos por ahí que inundaban todo y los precios súper bajos y perdí de momento. Bueno, chao, listo. Bueno. Pero siempre que quieras venir, me avisas si tienes casa. Sin problema. Dale, igualmente a uh, Hungría. <laughs> Perfecto. So we speak okay, in, in start recording. Oh, okay. Whatever, whatever. So you must okay, do, uh, Rafa, ask uh, Sean, who is from uh, Australia and also speaks okay. Spanish sometimes. Hola. Ah. Uh, un poco, uh, hablo un poco español. Oh. Solo un poco. Un, un poquito. Bien, nice, nice. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Well, cool. Rafa is, 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 is a, a, a great, amazing friend of mine, as the other guys also. And we all share sometimes in our lives uh, metal days. So that's yes. what we are. Ah, cool. Global oh. friends, global metal <laughs> friends, all of us. Yeah. Yeah. So, It, it, it We all be, miss it, I guess. Yeah, it would be awesome to to see each other and present, introduce ourselves yeah. in, in last summer. But well, yeah, it's like this. So yeah, yeah. At least now you can uh, know each other. Uh, I don't know, Rafa, if you see something about our posting in Metal Fetamine or something. And yeah, we, we made some interviews not, or whatever. Not this this week I was not able to enter, but oh, no. I, I was watching other other stuff that you put in that King uh, King Diamond bassist. It was great, and I'm <laughs> I'm checking when I can. Yeah. I, by the way, I don't know oh. I don't know what are the plans for today, but I think it's it's cool. Uh, I should drink beer or or wine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think... We become Paracho. So, no. Brachamos yeah. or whatever. Nos emborrachamos. Nos emborrachamos. I think the Hungarian front, the Hungarian front is halfway through already. <laughs> like, what's that? The Hungarian front is half drunk already. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, let me know. I'm 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 a father right now, and it's uh, 5 p.m. Oh, here. by the way, congratulations, man! Thank you so much. So lovely, so lovely, <laughs> Anna. I, I was uh, hearing the music a couple hours ago, and I was uh, talking with Rafa and Anna beside me. She was uh, hearing Cara Changreen, and now. Oh, that's I so cool, know. man! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my, my awesome. She, she has again. a very cool dad. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. like, I wish my dad was into metal, man. Fuck, that would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what what's gonna happen with her, you know, in the future. But yeah, she's like yeah. eight days alive and at kind of changing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It's it's not the powerful. No, no. It's a little bit more. That's cool. Yeah, it's a good start, you know. You can yeah, get harder later. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Rafa also has okay. a, 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 a has a, a son, but it's it's, it's quite big. It's a, it's a kid, yeah. but it's eleven. Yeah, Oscar is eleven years old. He's with me now. Oh. He will appear in a moment here. And he was listening the records with me. We uh -huh. didn't we didn't knew about Butcher. And <laughs> <Me neither. laughs> I picked it by no. chance, man. <laughs> no, but really, he was he was very, very happy with that song. He was like, oh, I wow. like it. it was, uh, I mean, uh, he has been hearing metal since he was born, and now he's a metalhead. He's he plays drums and oh, he loves nice. music. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool. 
awesome. Uh, uh, but but Rafa, he's worrying me, he's you, worrying me a bit because sorry, that, he was he's worrying me a bit because I put uh, carcass and not the gates and he prefers Angra and you know and it's like he prefers power metal but I think it's a state. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the future, I think we'll do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, why not? We have many, 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 many uh, new albums to, to review. And it was a, a, a nice exercise because when Rafa yeah. chose those bands, I never heard about uh, Psychotic Waltz and say, okay, I must to check what was that. <laughs> and her, of course. Yeah. yeah. Pretty nice. That's what I like about this exercise is that we get. To, to listen to bands that we wouldn't normally get to listen to. Like that Butcher that butcher band, out of the four albums, it was the only one that didn't sound like it came out last year. <laughs> it sounded like it came out 30 years ago, you know, just the sounds of it. And that was, but I really liked it as well. It was a really cool, uh, cool album. Okay. Well, let's start, let's start with, with this one then to, to, to review, since we are talking about it already. And I mean, I picked it by chance. It was just like, I had no time, like between door. Oh, came out last year, Butcher 666. Okay, let's just pick it, you know? <laughs> and I started to listen to it. And man, it was awesome. It reminded me a lot, like uh, Slayer, Slayer before Raiding Blood, you know, Hello Waits Times mm -hmm. was a debut album. Like a lot like the old Slayer, a bit like, uh, like the early Gorgos a bit. And it was really fun. I couldn't stop listening. This, uh, I don't want to say hilarious, but this like very fast speed metal approach with your high pitched solos. Like I just loved it. It was really great to to listen. Really refreshing. A really nice album. Discovery. Yeah, when when I was hearing it, it it, it looks like it's too short. You know, it's like and so quickly. It's okay, I want a couple of songs more of this. You know, it's got high speed metal. It was very nice mm. to hear, to discover for me. And then I, I was uh, looking at, and it's a band, like 20 years and just two full length albums. It's quite strange. Uh -huh. mm. yeah, they're so good. Yeah. They are so good. Yeah, I, I like yeah, them as well. And they're from, they're from Belgium, I read. Yep. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I really liked it, man. Um, yeah, it was such a a great. Uh, it was such a from the from the, I think the second track, it just kind of hits you, like just the speed, and then it's kind of yes. like it's pretty consistent throughout the whole album. I really liked it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So mosh pit must be very fun there. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it must be a massive fun pit, and like actually, I think they brought. The original thrash metal, you know, it had like a bit of a punky attitude, like a punky vibe to it, like not so serious and like with funny melodies uh, and stuff. And this is high, uh, this is with strong riffs. And I think they brought it actually on a different path of evolution to a next level, kind of, you know, like Slayer and Metallica, they all went to, to a different path and they went to, to heavier riffs, um, harder sounds, they lost the punk attitude a bit. And these guys, brought the punk and the power attitude in thrash metal like kind of forward, you know? And they really rush through the albums and they give you, they give me at least this, this good mood, you know? Yay, let's fuck it up, <laughs> you know? Like something like that. And this fun part is also missing. In nowadays metal, it's a bit missing the fun part, you know? Uh, yeah. But okay, like I like the title song a lot. The title song was my favorite. Uh, I had some dynamic in it, um, yeah. Which one? That's a title Which song. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Me, uh, me too. <laughs> me too. That's my yeah. favorite as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite. That's good. Because it's, it's like it's all metal. You know? All metal school. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I um, think Rafa is going to enjoy that, like Michael, because they, they both love uh, Mosh Pit and stuff. Yes. I, I'm, I miss Moss Pits a lot and, and that kind of music. I was hearing that music and I was imagining myself not sitting here in the band, you know, like hitting people and sharing a lot of <laughs> pressure. Yeah, it, it, it will be hell of a fun in a concert. 
but also I, I can hear a lot of classic metal in that band like mm -hmm. a lot yeah. of accept and and iron maiden even uh, first iron maiden it was all the time like smelling of that with that punk attitude of the first iron maiden records also is it has that vibe that that true vibe of the beginnings yeah yeah it, it's like a music <laughs> yeah. it's a music we we need to to sing in the metal place maybe isn't it Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, on it's the like tables, a, you know, music banging to headbang mm. and have fun with guy with your friends. I love it. <laughs> I mean, I really like I really like the production of it though. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, I really like the production because it's it sounded like it came out decades ago. So yes. just to be able to like uh, to. Uh, To sound like it came out tw uh, 20, 30 years ago, whatever. It had a really, really good production. Uh, I think it sounded really fucking good. It sounded like it, you know, metal used to sound a long time ago. And I think that's actually really, really cool for it to sound like that. To sound kind of in that classic kind of metal sound. I really like that. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, right, right, right. And it's spot on, you know, like in the early days of thrash metal, the production was like kind of hit and miss, you know. I think a lot of bands like just screwed up in the production phase. The producers had no idea how to handle uh, like this type of music, how to handle metal at the old times. And this one is like, uh, it's just perfectly done. It's better than most of the original uh, thrash metal uh, music. It's better produced, I think, actually, without losing yeah. the soul of it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm missing so much thrash metal. You know, it's like I, I want to to go a concert, to went to a concert, mosh pit. I need it. Thrash metal has the best mosh pits, man. It's yeah. like always the same. You know, <laughs> you would expect maybe something is death metal, but if you go to Exodus or so, it's like a big mosh party. You know, it's like massive. Like it has the best pits, Overkill, Exodus, like the old thrash bands. Municipal so waste, always. Municipal waste is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Striker, Striker is a Canadian uh, yeah. a thrash band, a new wave of thrash band. Had an awesome bit in Metal Days, actually, in 2015. It was was massive. Um, I did lots of clips there. We have to upload to uh, to our YouTube channel there. Great. Nice. What else, guys? Um, yeah, I, I really like this. Uh, I I prefer the second half of the album to the first half, mm -hmm. like from the song before the title track, from the, that, mm -hmm. the, that song and then the title track and then the next two I really liked. I thought the energy was really, really cool on those songs. Um, yeah, spot on, man, yeah. spot on. Like the song before the title track, Sentinels of DC, it was almost my favorite. Like it lost just by by a few millimeters to the, to the title song. And Viking yeah, Funeral... Yeah. Awesome song, uh, Brazen Serpent, a quicker one. Yeah, also great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Totally agree. So, how do you even pronounce this band's name? Is it just Butcher or like what's the, the two dots on the U, man? Because that's such a, it's a weird sound for an English speaker to pronounce. It's like the U with the yeah. U, Butcher. Is it Butcher? In German, it's the U. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In German, it's the U. Picture, picture. Picture. <laughs> but I have no idea what the association in Belgium is, you know. In Germany, <laughs> you have like a big Turkish community and you make in Germany you make fun of the E, you know, because the Turkish Turkish sounds are sometimes like this and you bend sometimes words like yeah, yeah. Bird or something like that. You make like a fake a fake Turkish version out of it. So I don't know what's the uh, what's the background. Maybe we, maybe we can oh. get to interview them one day and, and ask them about yeah. uh, what's up. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the, that could be the first question. How do you pronounce your your band name? Okay, cool. <laughs> That's all we want to know. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Have a nice day. <laughs> right. And also, it was it was fun for me to to realize the the German accent. They are from from Belgium, but they have a strong accent when they pronounce. Is clearly not British, not from the United States. You know, I don't know if you yeah. realize, but for me it was it's like weird. 
very, very true because some bands of today, they try to produce everything and they try to sound super professional and, and perfect. They, yeah, they try to be perfect and perfect production and, and you miss that raw sound and yeah. that yeah. vibe. Yeah, I was that, doing that's that what I, it, it sounded raw. That's what I that's that's definitely right. It sounded raw, which is awesome. It had yeah. a raw sound to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, next album. It's it's very Who's different, next? you know, like um Kara Chang Green album, the last album. They they are so black metal symphonic, and I, I think it's 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 the, the best work of them, and they have a, a very finest uh, production right now you know yes. I, I think yes. it's, oh, yeah. it's, the, it's the best album of them um yeah I, I pick it up because last time I went in in Europe I I saw Kara Chang in and it's, it, it was quite weird because black metal I want to see some black metal concert and it was 4 p.m in Dokum uh, Netherlands and it's too hot you know <laughs> <laughs> but, but but it was awesome. You know the, the music. I, I love that. It was where you know sunny day. Um, when I start to to hear this album, it was like like it's a concept album. So you must to check like a Frankenstein story. Um, uh, it's it's because uh, of a guy, you know, a theologist theologist. Uh, from mm, 15th century something and they, they start to to write about all the story about him and with with the, the things that make like a scientist with uh, dead bodies and, and animals and so um this guy made something very different than the beginnings of karchangring you know They were they used to to be three guys and with this album they are just two because the, the drummer is quite far away from from the old sound and I think they they grown up you know it's like evolution in their music even if it's the same line of their style but I I think it's, it's the best work ever from from Karachangrin you know it's, it's Like many uh, atmosphere songs, and sometimes it's very speedy music and very black, and many uh, German words, you know, because they love it in some regions or or curious. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's an album yeah. that, that I, I want to have in, in in my house, you know, it's like every time to, to, to listen to. Mm -hmm. What Historic do you release, yes. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a... absolutely. I love it. I love it. I love it. No, it, I discovered the album like a, like a while ago, and it's really awesome. It's spot on, you know. Like sometimes uh, the melodies, even in metals, you get like like schlager like, and the melodies are almost kitsch, you know, but not not quite, you know. They're quite catchy and very great. Like the early Arch Enemy had the same style, the same tune of melody wise. Mm -hmm. between between hard riffs and melodies mm -hmm. later on they lost it they went a bit too far into the melody and kitschy part you know and this album is like really spot on it has nice tunes it has nice melody tunes it has this humorous part this distorted humor then you have this dark side which goes towards a humorous approach and then it produces this very unique uh, attitude of not being serious but being hard and serious at the same time you know This, this style I really I really like a lot. It's very catchy. Uh, I love almost every song on that album. Um, I can't listen too much to it because then again it's too much melody for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but, it, uh, but it's a, a melody, it's, but it's, it's too clean. You know, it's, it's, it's I think mm -hmm. it's a perfect production. Uh, so yeah, it, 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 production is it, perfect. It, it, it each, better, song, yeah. each song you want to to hear the next one. You know, because it's like a concept mm -hmm. album, so you want to hear what, what yeah. happened next, what happened next, and, and of course But you can telling, take telling a story. Yeah, you, you yeah. want to know the final story. You know, it's like, and, and musically, you want to take a lot of parts, 
as as a horror metal, you know, that you can put in in some movies or whatever, or you can imagine many parts of the of the different songs in in some movies. Definitely. You know? it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm so happy that you suggested this album because I never heard of this band before, and from track number one, I loved it, man. I just loved the whole concept album of it, the whole storyline. And it was so dynamic, like it would change, you know, from, you know, uh, narrate like a narration and then it would go into some kind of like, you know, really cool dark riffs and then it would change and everything. It was really like a great story, like a movie almost. Um, mm -hmm. And the production was amazing. It was heavy at times. It was funny at times. It was lighter at times. It had a lot of melody. I liked the symphonic element to it as well. It kind of made it more of like a like a big production. Like it was, it sounded big. Like it would be amazing to see this album like with the symphony. Like that would be like a massive, big like production. Um, yeah. I love ne Necromancer, that song. Yeah, I think track amazing. number, I, I've been listening to that on repeat for a lot. Like I just love that. Just the risks in that song are fucking amazing. Um, and, and also the next yeah, one. Yeah, man, I'm really... You know, yeah, after yeah, 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 yeah. That's know, really it's cool. Sound for solitude. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so that touch. Yeah. Yeah. It, it sounds good for for a live experience. You know, some of those. Yeah, those yeah, songs. yeah. Pretty much. I'm really happy, man. Such a fucking awesome album. This is gonna be on my playlist, I think, for many, many years. So. Uh, Great. Thank you very much. Good, good choice. <laughs> yeah. Good choice. Cheers for that. Mm. Yeah, I think it's the best album of, of the four. I think it's my favorite. If I would have to pick one, it, it's just a perfect album, you know? Unfortunately, there's not much more to say about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. just you just have to listen to it. <laughs> no fucking... yes. Oh, man. Yeah, for me, it was... It was uh... very very special to see a, a black metal album that I can show to my mother, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it really has some catchy moments. Uh, Monster is a great song, but it will be also a great single. I don't know if they planned that, but it works like a story, but it has these catchy moments and it's very, I don't know how to say it, very easy listening. Yeah. It's not yeah. like an album that saying. you have to work yourself into. <laughs> no, I mean, you, there, there are some albums that you have to work on them, listen to them many mm -hmm. times, and then you love them. But at the first time, it's like, well, I don't know. But this album, it was like yeah. magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. It, happened, it right. happened to me with, it's quite different, but you remember the last Borknagar album? Through North, I don't know if you listen. It, it was like, oh my, it, it's so easy to show that to people not into metal and yeah, it, and to fall in love. That. Yeah, it's it's, that, it's an yeah. album to fall in love in the first sight or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. instantaneous. Yeah, it's it's a, a record to recommend to someone that hasn't listened to black metal or stream music. Yeah, it will work. I love it's it. It's like a gate a gateway drug. To get them over to the dark side, you give. Them <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. A, tra like a transition. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let, let's go uh, to the dark so side. Yeah. <laughs> Come over. Sounds, sounds funny. Sounds funny. <laughs> hey guys, I don't want to sound like a drunk, but oh, that's the second. Nah, one. man. Yes, man. Hello. That's a dark beer here. Yes. Oh, here's an Argentine yeah. IPA. Mm. Um, I guess I can talk about Enslaved. Okay. So, Utgard. Yeah. Um, I first, I haven't really, hadn't really heard about Enslaved before. Like, I've heard the name before the band, but I never actually listened to them. And the first song I actually came across was Homebound, which is the fourth track, which I fucking, I just love that song. And that kind of got me into uh, checking out the album. So they're a Norwegian band, um, classified as like what Norwegian progressive black metal, which I find interesting because I like progressive music in general. Um, and it's 
fifteenth album from his sleeve. So uh, mm-hmm. I had yeah had no I had no idea about this band, but fifteenth album. And I really, really liked it, especially yeah, the, the fourth track. And then the fifth track, really, really weird. It went into this kind of like eighties style drum beat, which was out of left field. I'm like, wow, this is an interesting choice of sound. Um, but I really, really liked it. Um, what do you guys think about it? It, it was so many times without well, I, here uh, in Slave. You know, it, it, the first time I heard about him, about them, uh, I, I was seeing a, in our festival uh, and it was so powerful for me, you know, alive. And then I, I tried to discover the music by, by the albums. And, and I, I think it's a strong album. I mean, mm. m- many bands made so good albums last year. I don't know why. Maybe yeah. because they were all together or whatever. Maybe. But yeah, I, I think they, they 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 do or they did they, their best in this time. Yeah, like I don't I don't think it was as heavy as probably maybe what they used to because it was quite um, it was quite easy listening as well to a certain extent. Uh, and they did have, yeah, like, like that 80s kind of sound. And there was also like a, a Frank Zappa. It reminds me of Frank Zappa, this section on flights of thought and memory, this kind of like homage to Frank Zappa, which I thought mm-hmm. is another one of these things where you don't expect to hear that in this kind of music. Um, so I liked mm-hmm. it just for the fact that it was a bit different. Um, but I don't think mm-hmm. it was probably the heaviest stuff that they normally did. In saying that, though, there were heavy parts of this album that I found really, really awesome. Like, I love the light and the dark together. I think that makes a really good contrast in the song. Um, all, all the instruments yeah. sound, sounds very clean, you know? It's like, yeah. Because it's heavy and clean. I, I think it was really well produced as well. And I noticed, like, um, in that Homebound song as well, like, the, the bass guitar was distorted, but it was still clean. So I think like the sound production, like the engineers were really fucking awesome on this album. It sounded really big and clean and you could hear all the instruments. And it sounded, yeah, it sounded like it came out last year. Like it sounded modern, yeah. um, which is, yeah. I like the, the, the yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, the butcher one, like, yeah, it's, it's, but that's cool to make it, to make an album that sounds like it came out a while ago, like that must take some fucking like skill as well, you know? Yeah, of course. To make it sound raw. It's a certain yeah. type, you know? Yeah. I think this enslaved, enslaved, I tried like 20 times to get in. I never, I never got in. And <laughs> right now it's, it's super subjective because I'm kind of a subject, little object, but it's super subjective <laughs> right now. I'm kind of on the harder edge, you know, and it costs me a while to come down from the blast beats of ingested and the hard stuff, you know, into the melody sphere, you know. But I have to admit, yeah, yeah. like we chatted, I was on the train when I chatted to you, Sean, like on, on Facebook or so, and I listened to the album. Um, uh, to most songs, Flights of Thought and Memory, it was an awesome song. And I really, uh, I really got stuck into that album. I really liked it after a while. It's like kind of more the meditative side, easy listening, um, like some, some nice background to work for me. Um, but I, I liked it uh, a lot a while. It has too much melody sometimes for me. Like when it comes in, you know, like <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> over the edge for me sometimes. <laughs> but, in general, <laughs> but in general, yeah, I think no, it's the first and first one I really like, especially uh, like flight, flight of Thoughts and Memories. So that was the so later part, it was just awesome. Like it's really, I think. Um, yeah, Homebound and this one, I think these two are my, my, my favorite songs on the album, definitely. So, yeah, a great album, yeah. perfectly produced as well. Yes. Yeah. Good. Cheers for that, Andrew. Cheers. Cheers, man. Now, now we discover some progressive music. I mean, I discovered. Thanks, Garaha, yeah. for that. <laughs> Psychotic walls. Yeah. Oh my. What's that? I think maybe it's my time to talk a bit more because I I love that band 
since since the beginning. They have four wonderful albums, and they have been 24 years without making music. And suddenly they they reunite uh, two three years ago. They played some concerts. I was happy enough to see them in Bakken. Mm. Um, I don't remember where you were. Maybe you were with the with the Jaggermeister people on the bar. <laughs> yeah, but but anyway, anyway, some pictures of that. Now I now I remember. <laughs> no, but but I was happy to see them play live. But they had no new music, and it was the soundtrack of my of my confinement. I don't know it in your countries how it was, but. With COVID, we were we were in a lockdown in our houses, no chance to go out. And suddenly, I think it was like, hey, last month, Psychotic Waltz was bringing a new record, and it was like, oh, it, yeah, it, I was listening to it every fucking day. They have a strong, very very strong influence of OC. Uh, sometimes it, it sounds like. I don't know if you like Ozzy Osbourne, but it's like progressive and also that Zach Wilde's era of, of Ozzy Osbourne, like in Perry Mason and that kind of stuff. So it's quite a good balance for me. It's not that progressive. It's more, more like symphonic, atmospheric, but uh, very standard metal at the same time. I love it. I, I enjoyed that album. I was dubbing because there was so many great albums. And in fact, I was going to ask you, which other records did you put on the list? Because the list is so good. So yeah. I want to know more records that mm, they didn't reach the point. But for me, Conception, I was, I was waiting a lot for Conception. I don't know if you know the band, the Norwegian band. But uh, it was a bit of a disappointment for me, the album. Catatonia was putting a great record. Paradise Lost, uh, it, it's, they are always good. But for me, that last album is great. So my that second I... Waltz, it was very, very special for me. It was like every moment of the lockdown, I was listening to it. When I was going out, I was listening, listening all the time to that record for months. It was, and I love that one. They play like magicians. Great. When when I start okay. to now, read about the, the band, <laughs> yeah, of course. When I start to read about the band, it was like so progressive, and you say, okay, I, I'm gonna hear something like I don't know, in theater or something, and it's very different, and, and it was um, I don't know, more friendly, you know, to to hear. You know the band. They, they, are not, they are not ready to play a lot of notes. Yeah. It's more like the mood of the moment. The singer plays the flute like heaven, and and it's strange to hear a song that the solo is played in flute. You know, yeah, like, it's, it's like jitter yeah. you know, It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like they do whatever they want. So yeah, so I I really enjoy that band. They put a lot of care in everything they do. And I hope to see them live as soon as possible. That's a band that you can sit and watch the concert. Okay. Not not in the mood to you know to to mosh pit with that band. But, <laughs> but and what was your favorite song from the <laughs> album? What's your favorite song from the album? I don't know. Maybe the if I have to show someone, uh, "Back to Black" is a great song. Uh, yeah, uh, the Devils and Angels. The opening track was the first one that I listened to in the pre. -re uh, I don't know how to say, it, but when when the album was not ready, mm -hmm. that song was already shown and it was amazing. And Sisters of the Dawn, the one of the last ones, is is also fantastic. But I used to listen it from beginning to the end. I, I've never yeah. put back, you know, like, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, really. The Fallen yeah, is like, it's a great ballad, but... Yeah, 
I guess for me, I, I didn't really have a lot of time to listen to the album uh, yeah, a yeah, lot, yeah. but I, re- I liked the second track, Stranded. I think, um, if I can remember, I just liked the, the guitar, like the melody of the guitar. It had a really cool riff that kind of draws you in. And yeah. I love the fucking band. The band name is cool. Psychotic Waltz. That's yes. an amazing <laughs> fucking name for a band. I loved it, but yeah, this is the first time I've heard of these guys before. So I'll have to like um, listen to this album a bit more, let it grow on me a bit more. But I like, I like what I've heard so far, especially yeah, track two, Stranded. I really, really liked. Yeah, they they yeah. try to be like kind of hypnotic, you know, like sometimes in their music is like not groove metal, but some kind of vibe that you can put it. Yeah once and two times and three times and it's on the background and it, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. you and it kind of makes it kind of makes your head move when you listen to it yes. you know? <laughs> automatically like you can't it's like you know automatic like yeah, yeah. you can stop yeah it's good. <laughs> yeah you can't stop yeah well i'm missing juices yeah right <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I remember Psychotic Walls of the 90s. I think I bought their first album at that time, but it was kind of, at that time, it was kind of washed away by my playlist was full. I was still into Radiant Blood and uh, the early Metallica, and then I discovered Black Metal and Dark Throne. And this album, I think in the very beginning, it was kind of like, okay, what do I do with it? Listen to it like twice or so, put it away and forget about it, something like that. And then... Uh, I didn't have enough time to, to really listen to it because it was just an hour ago. Uh, but the new stuff I liked a lot better. I really like it. Uh, it has, again, it has a lot of melody, but in this case, it's kind of interesting. If you keep it interesting, it's very progressive. It's very genuine. It's not a, like a repetition. It's not a cliche. It's not like some Schlager type thing, you know? Um, so it's very original. And I think they have a real message in their music. Like I need a bit more time to, to listen to it. But I listened like the hour before we started to talk uh, to that album, and I didn't get bored, which is kind of surprising. <laughs> so it's always a good sign. Uh, <laughs> so I had to listen to it again, and I can't, I can't say more. I can't pick like a song now because I don't memorize now. I didn't, I can't remember. Uh, I don't have any memory. But um, I really liked it. Yes, it's like a very interesting new concept uh, for me, and it's good that they still exist. Sometimes bands like that pop up after years again. Because you mentioned, like, suddenly they, uh, they bring a new album out, you know. It was the same for me because we talked to, to David White from, from Hidden, uh, like, two weeks ago. And say it's the same. Ten years silence. And then they drop, like, a brilliant album. Like, just like said, out of the air, you know. Um, and yeah, I will definitely listen to some more now. Nice. Great. Great choose. Well, I, I discovered a band with, with, the, with the roughest choose. Well, I, I discovered because I, I never heard about him. I don't know, maybe maybe because in, in South America, it's, you know, the, 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 the merch is very different, you know, it's, so it's not a popular band or, or, or whatever. Yeah, and now I can understand that in Europe and the States, you know, it's quite different, the, the metal sound and business and stuff. So it's nice to, to be in contact with you guys to discover some music. Even if it's old, you know, <laughs> but I never heard him. Um, I really enjoyed today to hear that album. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. I mean, all are great discoveries. Um, I mean, let's vote for the best one. What's, what's the number one album of, of uh, three? Fede's album, of course. For me, anyway. I yes, think, that's the I best think one. so. Garage, definitely. Yeah, Garage. I think so too. <laughs> Album number two. Uh, I, I, I would vote for Enslaved because I have I've listened to it more, so it's grown on me a bit more than the other ones. But uh-huh. uh, I, I like Butcher as well. I, I do like that. <laughs> I, I, would I, say, I do like I would that. Say, I would say Butcher. 
I don't know how it's pronounced, <laughs> but but I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, it's, so, it's, it's so much fun. I go with Butcher. Butcher. Yeah. Butcher. Okay. Butcher. 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 We have to ask these guys. We have to invite them. <laughs> just for that. Just for that question. Just for one question. How do you pronounce your name? Okay. Bye bye. That's all we want to know. We should. <laughs> we stuff, should do that. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can yeah. email them and and just ask them for an interview. Ask that yeah. for them. Yeah. Maybe we can send them the link of the video. Why? Why not? Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna start um, ask to our people from production to contact the the band for sure. <laughs> Which is you, Rafa. We are part of the metal yeah. filming team now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it will be hell of a fun to see that the bands hear the, this reaction because yeah, we sometimes want they don't get that vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and now now we have an, another challenge. What are we gonna do? We what are we gonna pick for the next week? Yeah. Whoa. Now. Do, should we do new albums or should we do old albums that, you know, like kind of like classic albums? What Let's, pick review oh. Let's pick uh, a year. Yeah. Yeah, Let's pick, pick a year. Let's pick a year. Some classic. Do, do you want to, you know, to, to have a battle, a metal battle about classics? Well, it's just an old album that, you know, is a great album that maybe we don't know about, but had a really important part to play in the history of fucking metal or oh, we can choose it a an, year an underrated album you know that an underrated oh. album yeah exactly yeah. that underrated album that you are gonna love and the three other guys will hate <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect <laughs> that's a metal spirit <laughs> all the population <laughs> hates <laughs> we will need beer but okay. that's yeah 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 <laughs> Right. Rafa, pick a year and we all choose choose the album of the year. Should I pick the year? Yeah, yeah of course. Why not? Well, um, I would say 1995. Okay. 1995. Okay. Because okay. of my youth, right. you know. <laughs> okay, a lot, cool. A lot, I think a lot of strange out. things happening. And I was thinking when you were talking, I was thinking not super, super <laughs> classic, I know. But it was that time when Nirvana and Pearl Jam was crashing all metal, and a lot, yeah. a lot of forbidden gems. I, a lot of I've forgotten forbidden gems. Uh, a lot of uh, rare albums that were amazing, and they slipped under the radar because all the focus was on grunge yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah, it, yeah okay. all the focus all right. was on on Pearl Jam, Nirvana, and grunge and beginning of, of yeah, yeah, Slipknot yeah. and Korn and yeah, that kind new of metal, uh, new, new metal so rise a and, new metal. Of great metal. and mm. I'm not talking about Virtual Eleven and Iron Maiden shit like that yeah All but right. maybe you so, know, but, so 1995 and it has to be an album that we think is underrated or we yeah, think yeah, people yeah. should know about this okay Oh, right. whatever, like whatever album, you know. Like, there's so many great releases. I'm just checking out here Battles oh, of the yeah. North Immortal, you hey, know, like My Dying Bride. It's, it's so German, it's anxious, you know. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, I gotta <laughs> check it out, you know. You can already yeah. start talking about that year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's be patient till next week. <laughs> I don't remember that that year. The, the only thing I remember is that in the in the end of uh, 1994, Megadeth came from the first time to Argentina, and it was love at the first sight, man. You know, it, <laughs> it starts yeah. the 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 I want the Megadeth stuff, um, and I was uh, here in that time euthanasia, and I don't know. I must to check in 1995. I must to check. Oh my. I'm checking this year also, and fuck, there's like 20 records I want to talk about. Yeah. I already have my <laughs> album. I already know what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> you know which one? 
<laughs> Many right, yeah. Which one? It's not, it's it's not the X Factor, no. No. <laughs> yeah, no, that, no, that's, no. A great, uh, that's a great album. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's underrated. Well, it's underrated, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. Yeah. But oh my symbolic, death symbolic, my. I can't a lot of so, so that will be a hard pick, yeah. It will be a hard pick. Blind it will Guardian, be a very, very louder of the soul of oh. at the gates of my swan song from Carcass. Mm. Now, I pick a great year. Oh, yeah. But it has, has to be, oh, it has to be something surprising. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah absolutely. I think I have it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it it yeah. was not the, it. the one that it was that I was planning, but I, I saw something that it... Oh. Okay, wow. so it's, it's like a Pandora a lot of, box, isn't it? Should I a lot of great albums, or? man. A lot of great albums on that that year from a <laughs> lot of different bands. It's, that's going to be hard. But I, I know which one I'm going to do. Maybe, maybe we can pick two. <laughs> Who <laughs> <laughs> wants to make a, a like a podium? No, yeah, maybe maybe it's, it's it's not enough with just one album or or band. Maybe we wants to make a podium of Two? three or something, you know. And then let people play, like you know. Just choose cheetah. <laughs> Yeah, it's Cheetah good. has to be one album. I will pick a random one I, I never listened before. Like, that's for me, it's <laughs> the know. most fun. But, you, know? but you must yeah. just, <laughs> just like, I went to random with Butcher, I went to random list down to before yeah, Butcher. I had two single, two single releases, you know, just by chance. Yeah, I yeah. Part of the list, yeah. You know, well, the, <laughs> so, the new Cannibal Corpse one, the new Cannibal Corpse album is going to be in April. So that single is going to be on the album coming out in April. Wow, the single was mind blowing. It was really great. Yeah, yeah. It was cool. really nice too. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. 1995 is not the 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 year of uh, Paradise Lost release. I was uh, really Dra I, uh, Draconian Times. Yeah, iconic, I think isn't it? Draconian Times is is yeah. a masterpiece. Mm, yeah, it is. So I love it. Fuck on the right. This is. Uh, yeah. You think it's on the rate? No, 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 no. But I, I was no, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, no, no. I, I think. It's and also, yes. yeah. Blind Guardian, Blind Guardian released Imaginations from the other side. Mm. Also, I don't know. I don't know in South America, but in Europe, it's huge. It's like yeah, it's a yeah. Legendary album, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. I was checking also Gamma Ray, Land of the Free. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of funny bands. Uh, the manufacturer from Fear Factory. I don't. It changed. Oh, yeah. Factory, yeah. It changed wow. a lot that that record. Wow. Osmosis. And Osmosis. Yeah. Also, uh, smells like children from Marilyn Manson was the beginning of the yeah. end, you know. But also for me, slaughter slaughter of the soul from At the Gates. Of yeah. course, it's not underrated. I, there's like. A, Huge it's a classic. style. Yeah, it's a classic. Yeah, it's a, it's, there's a style based, based on In Flames and yeah, In the Gate. Yeah, Golden Song. Yeah. Yeah, Golden Ball Sound. There's a lot of... Maybe I should change the year. No, but... I, well, I... I <laughs> 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 now, now I'm looking... and well, I think when an underrated album were uh, Stomp 442 from Anthrax, at that year yes yes it was amazing i love that record on, on the moment i was yeah, but but no the, the, it was the crowd party, party. yeah yeah but it go i think it was because anthrax uh, they choose very badly the companies they were singing mm. to yeah because that album was uh, underrated and also volume eight on the next year or two years later it was also Nobody know about that record yeah. because it has not. Um, it, there was many countries it was not even released. Yeah, and it was not the time of Spotify or YouTube. Yeah. You can oh, now we now we are having. Yeah, in those those years, you know, the the record lovers have more, um, uh, you know, weight in the in the decisions of the bands and the promotion stuff. Yeah, of course. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Um, it, it was that album with uh, Belladonna or John? No, no, it Bush. was with, Bush? with John Bush. It oh. was the 
the continuation of that wonderful sounds of white noise. Oh yeah, that was nice. That, that record in Spain was well, they put them in the same level of Metallica or Megadeth mm -hmm. with oh, like sounds of white noise. Time. And suddenly yeah. nothing. And, and suddenly they disappear. And it was like, hey, I have a new Anthrax album. No way. Nobody was <laughs> believing you. Really, it was not yeah. we were not able to buy it in Spain. Mm -hmm. And it was like Sometimes in the metal hammer or something like that, you can buy some uh, uh, importation records, import records. But it was very strange at the moment. Mm. I remember, I remember one friend of mine bring, bring uh, brought to me that album, along with uh, Paradise Lost, uh, Draconian Times, and yeah. At the Gates, At the Gates, uh, Slaughter of the Soul. The same day, it was like, hey. I picked that three records. Wow. Let's let's listen to it. And it was like, oh. Hmm. Wow. Cool. Yeah. And suddenly Antrax always was in a weird spot. Antrax was always in a weird spot in history, you know. Like they had yeah. been considered as a big four, but I never I never personally I never got tuned in into Antrax. I never found my my relationship with them. Like I left, I always Bye. left them beside kind of. And yeah. I never got into, I think they are considered big four because they had been one of the first, but Overkill, for example, great trash mm. band. I was much more yeah. into um, the Happy Meal, Heathen, he had uh, Legends, absolutely. Like Hendrix, I don't know. Um, yeah, I have to listen more to them, actually, I think. Yeah. But I, I always recommend to, to the people listening to Hendrix to listen to the John Bush era because... Oh, yeah. I think the problem is when they speak about Anthrax, everybody listens to the same three songs. They are great, but it's not the Anthrax style. They are like, I don't know, it's like, the, it's like kill, the, kill Them All from Metallica. It's not representative mm -hmm. of the sound. You don't get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you don't recommend Hit the Lights to somebody who wants yeah, to yeah. listen to Metallica mm -hmm. because there's yeah. so much more. And yeah. with Anthrax, he's well, always like, yeah, take that three songs. Okay, much yeah. Okay, I can dance to them. Yeah, but they have a lot more to say. It's so, like recommending yeah. Enter Sandman for Metallica. Like, Metallica is way more than fucking Enter Sandman. You know, like... Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, this is... Cool. With Anthrax, it happens something that I think, like, many bands, where like, they have, like, an era underrated. You know, I, I was uh, remember now Testament. Uh, so I love Testament, yes. but it, it was like after Souls to Souls, it was like an era, like 10 years of nothing. And it was amazing jobs from them. Yes. Like, but may, maybe it's, it's what uh, said uh, Rafa, you know, it's like uh, the levels at that time, promotions and stuff. Yeah. Mm. They, they didn't work. You know, I think what happens in metal is people are very faithful to their bands, you know, and especially talking about trash, you know, you had Slayer, Metallica as the first wave, like the big bands, and whoever came like just like one, two, three years too late, like Testament, they probably established themselves, but they had been too late to be these legends, you know, same happened to Heathen too, mm -hmm. you know, they absolutely technically, yeah. musically wise, they had really top, top notch, you know, one of the best bands, they had been just a bit too late. And in thrash yeah. metal, like what I expressed in another part, I think in the chat or something, like thrash metal has this issue with the voice. You know, the voice in thrash metal was never defined. And uh, some bands just had like a voice which was not so not so compatible or not so liked by the people. You know, Hatfield, Metallica, he had the luck. He had been like a compromise between the clean and the rough voice. And he was super balanced with his voice, you know. Other bands tried to... Um, they came from Maiden's high-pitched voice and it, didn't, it worked out more or less. Like Heathen, for example, uh, they had a the high-pitched voice and not everybody liked it. Creator mm. was more like Towers Death and uh, and Black, a more unclean voice. As he changed it later, Mili Petrosa learned, as far as I know, after Extreme Aggression, Mili Petrosa uh, changed his singing style and personally, I didn't like it. I think in Extreme Aggression, he just screamed the shit out, you know, no, <laughs> didn't give a shit about the, about the chords, you know, and like, I think in Thrash, like the voice is a critical part, and it just got overtaken by Death Metal, which has a much more clear, defined profile, I think in Black Metal as well, 
is more clearly yeah, defined exactly. uh, by profile. That's why it's, why it's so great to see bands like Butcher. Butcher. Yeah, <laughs> I like I like your your argumentation, but I was thinking of Megadeth. Nobody can oh. listen to Megadeth from the boys. I mean, not even in yeah. the live records. <laughs> you know, in the in the concerts, you can't even hear the boys. Not need to say. No, no. You prefer no. not to hear it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like my mother screaming, man. This hey, thing. man, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not this often a stay now. <laughs> yeah. No, Mega is the last album I really listened was so far as a good so what? You know, after that it was like too much <laughs> melody. <laughs> yeah. <It's broke>. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, I tried millions of times. You I know, mean, some albums are great, but listen like three times to it, you know, and set it for me. So. Yeah, you know, it, it's like <laughs> Rusty Rust in Peace is, is, a, is a masterpiece of whatever, but it's too clean for me. You know, I love yeah, exactly, like exactly, it. Exactly. I love yeah. so far, until so far, you know, those three first albums. I, I think their brutality, raw, you know, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I want to go with the mosh pit with this music, you know, rattlehead or looking yeah. at the cross or whatever. And then it's okay. Then risk. Come on. That's... Oh my, <laughs> come on. <laughs> risk was awful, but but now they have a lot of good records in the in the last 10 years. Yeah. I, but I, I think all, all of them are, are like more or less the same you know it's like really nothing too yeah, cool, exactly. not too I agree yeah. Oh, okay. it's okay yeah okay i agree with Fede. actually the other day i listened no the other day like two months ago again to some new album of them and actually it's not not really stretch anymore it's like classic heavy metal almost you know it's like real melody very slow partially And yeah, I mean, I doubt if it's great music, but it's just not for me, I think. Yeah, yes. but it happens with a lot of bands. I Sometimes you don't know if you prefer them to stop or to do more records because, <laughs> let, no, let's be honest. I love Saxon. It's very classic, uh, but I uh -huh. have never listened to the last eight, year, eight records. I mean... Hmm. They have like 25 yeah. records. Sometimes it's like, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it, it, it's sometimes you manowar, you know. Oh, um, well, but manowar I think is the opposite. Is they they don't put new music. No. From the last, I mean, last. They know years. they know they don't need to. <laughs> yeah. You don't want 14 more records of manowar. You well, have one. No, nobody can understand <laughs> why why Iron Maiden make. New records. If when when they yes. play alive, it's like 85. No, know? but Alpo, yeah, yeah, Alpo, yeah. I was uh, three years ago. Iron Maiden was making a tour, and the the first five songs were new songs, and nobody was mm -hmm. singing. It was like, <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> what is that? Really? Covers. To defend, Cover music? to defend Iron Maiden a bit. To defend Iron Maiden a bit. Like I started with with my first album. I think was was Men and War, Kings of Metal. My second album was Slayer, Rain and Blood, and and shut up like that, you know. And I had a Maiden. I had uh, I had like uh, some in time in all these albums. I had them. I listened to them. I kind of liked them, but I never got into them. And actually, I think with Sean, I talked about that. I discovered Maiden then in 2012, 2013, around that. I discovered again uh, with the Final Frontier. And that was the first time that I really got into Maiden. That I really got the songs of them. That I really discovered all the old stuff, the new stuff. So I listened in the gym to them a lot. And I really like the Final Frontier. I love a lot uh, this album. So for me, Maiden, paradoxically, although I'm an old metalhead, it's like, Kind of the new stuff which brought me really into into the thing, you know. Also, I listened to the first albums as well. Okay. Yeah, I only started listening to Iron Maiden uh, maybe like a month ago. Like, I never really got into them. And um, what was the the album that I that I've been listening to? Is it the Number of the Beast? Is that a song or an album? Both. Both. Uh, that album. 
and that's that's fucking cool, man. So that was like 1985. Yeah, I never really, that. never really got into them. Like I, you know, heard them before. I never really resonated with the sound, but yeah, months ago I started listening to them um, because we had uh, uh, Bailey, Blaze Bailey. I'm like, okay, yeah. so he used, to, he used to sing for Iron Maiden, so I should probably research this band. And yeah, actually, I fucking love that galloping kind of, you know, that galloping change that they do. That's fucking classic. Yeah, it gets into your mind, man. That's it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, totally. Come on, the Blaze Bailey is a is a great era. You know, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Iron Maiden. Yeah. To to hear and see Clansman, and that's it. That's all. Clansman. Clansman. Yeah. 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 That, that song is awesome. Yeah, Blaze Bailey. Uh, like I I discovered two like through the Absolver interview. Yeah. And I really love this guy. Like I terrorized all my friends over Christmas with Absolver and Blaze Bailey. <laughs> and I think the problem, the only problem with him was like when you lose, when you look at Bruce from Aiden, like he has such a strong voice, which lots of volume. Yeah. He puts his whole body into the voice, you know. And Blaze has a different voice. Um, yes, like it's a different approach. It's not so much volume power, it's a beautiful voice, but a different style. And I think he had some bad luck to. Uh, to just not be in track with a with Bruce style, basically. Yeah. Uh, that's what I think. But yeah, but like, when you, when you hear about, uh, about Blaze from Steve Harris, they say, okay, we made two of our best records with Blaze. But I think it was yeah. the crowd between, you know, the relationship uh, and Chisim, Bruce and Blaze. Yeah. I think both, both are great, you know. Let's get Blaze on YouTube. We have to interview him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next time, yeah. next time we're gonna um, we're gonna do it. Don't worry. You want to do it, Rafa? Yes, of course. And I I think that Blaze Bailey era of Iron Maiden was it it would have been super great if it was not called Iron Maiden. But people, it was like Ripper Owens with Judas mm. Priest. Judas Priest, yeah. It was. It, but it was. It was a different also, band. It was also an amazing album in in the uh, yeah. in the Tipper Owen era. The uh, album Judas was Priest great, was Demolition, but... isn't it? Demolition yeah, Demolition was the second awesome. one, but Jubilator awesome. was awesome. Mm. But it was not Judas Priest as we re mm. remember it. So yeah. a lot of fans were disappointed. I mean, it's, it's the same if you hear to the first four records of Pantera. Nobody listened to that shit anymore. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know, that glam style, but suddenly it was like... Too high pitched. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, some, yeah. and suddenly they turned into a, a different band. And yeah. Blaze, Blaze has, has a lot of... Uh, of strength and a different voice and, and I think they did not pick well because he's a great singer and he was trying to fit in a different style so but of course which singer who who Steve Harris called hey come to Iron Maiden who would say no of yeah Right. Yeah, exactly. I, but it happens a lot, actually. Like, it, that, that it, band thinks it picks the wrong singer, you know? Yeah, but it, you must be character, you know, at the seven, uh, 20, 27 years old to to put in, in the in, in this side to, yeah. to replace uh, Bruce Dickinson, you know? It's like, whoa. Not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, you can I mean, replace, like, such a perfect singer, yeah. And also, I was, when, when I saw him playing live, the first times with Iron Maiden, I was not feeling that uh, diva style of I'm the new Bruce Bruce Dickinson. I'm doing it better. No, he was he was doing he was doing his stuff and he was doing doing it honestly. But you can't feel like I'm here. You know, like sometimes I, I'm thinking of Arch Enemy right now. You know, but yeah, 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 yeah. all yeah. right. But you know, sometimes if, if they have picked, I don't know, a, a super great singer from a great band with very famous, maybe he was he would have been different. He was like honest and and trying to do yeah. his best. So yeah. good for him. 
Yeah. Talking about arch enemy, what do you think about Anissa? <laughs> Same. I, I prefer the, Same. I prefer the old the <laughs> I, prefer, I remember, I remember listening to um to Black to Black Earth when I was a teenager, like that song. Uh -huh. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing, man. Black Earth. I preferred the the male vocalist, to be honest. Uh, it just sounded um, a bit more raw, a bit more raw. Um, yeah, that's that's my opinion anyway. Yeah, no, I'm I'm under now all, all the way through, you know. Like at least, I, but I'm not sure if it's a voice actually or the songwriting of the new albums, you know. Like say, like talking about Taraj Angren, um, they have this good compromise between catchy melodies and hard style. And I think um, I don't know the new stuff. They just lost it, you know. And they went too, down the road too much of kitsch, you know? Like they had this, as the eagle flies alone, oh my God, I think, okay, let's make barbecue chicken, you know? Like it's like kind of too kitschy and too, too simple, the melodies, you know? Like the old stuff was great. I listened the other day to Nemesis again, Nemesis Live um, with Angela, and it's just, just so much power and so much aggression. And yeah. I, I just missed that from the yeah. other one. But probably I should stop spoiling interviews with Alisa in the future. <laughs> but I think the problem is they are not catchy enough. I, I mean, they try to be catchy in every song, and you can notice that. It's not like it goes out, but I, I can imagine them like, okay, let's do another single. And that's the problem, yeah. I think. When you listen to the new stuff, it's like, it's like hey, guys, you're going to love this. And all the time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 but it's just simple, you know. It's, it's a bunch of bands like that, like Amal Amal, it's, it's like the same a bit, but they're on the good side, you know. It's like really a very thin line. Uh, in some new, it's the same. Like uh, the actual album, the new album, I don't like it at all. It's too mellow. It's too much. It's a, okay, let's do a routine, and beautiful melody and blah, you know. And the one before was really awesome. It has some roughness combined with melody, the sketchy melodies, you know, it's like really a very thin line metal to cross, at least for me. Like, and if it's too much melody, you'll keep, bye-bye. I think, is it, is it maybe a question of whether they're writing to cater to their audience or they're writing for themselves? So usually what happens yeah. at the start, bands write for themselves, and then there's this period where they start to write for their audience because they expect something in particular, and you can notice that usually. It doesn't yeah. sound authentic, authentic anymore. It yeah. sounds like it's yeah, too right. formulaic, like the songs have a particular structure now that like, you know, that people understand. And maybe that's what it is. It's like, you know, there's that transition, writing for yourself or writing for your audience. And, you know, I'm not here Good to point, say yeah. they, sh they shouldn't do that, but you know, you can, you can, you can hear that usually. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, they shouldn't do that. I say it. They shouldn't. <laughs> I say it. <laughs> no, it's an old, it's an old, old thing of posers, you know. Like you notice that from the very early days, it was always a conflict in metal, you know. You had one band coming up. First album was like kind of, yeah, you know, like Kill 'Em All from Metallica too. It was like, ah, we are almost there, you know. And then second, third album was awesome mind-blowing and then many bands just try to copy themselves copy, just try to uh, to maintain this and it wasn't genuine anymore and since you fucked it up like many bands ended like yeah. that yeah yeah wow. yeah yeah as long as you put metallica on, on the list i think they earned that much money because they they were true you can hear them true in every album but it was completely different from the last album I mean, you you really can't believe that some band put kill them all, Master of Puppets, and Enter Sandman. It's like they are the yeah. same band, but but they sounded true. Yeah. Then it mm -hmm. load and suddenly okay. Yeah, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> no, I never I never listened to. I think I never listened to actually. <laughs> On the other side, I was sometimes bored by Slayer. You know, like. Each album is like the same style and no improvement. And at times I was bored, I have to admit. But then last week I listened to, um, to Repentless and it was actually quite great. I liked it. So, yeah. 
Yes. You know, yeah. I, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, of Slayer, but I must recognize that I think that they uh, retire in the, in the high level, you know, with a great yeah. album and physically, you know, like a, a show stuff and, and sounds pretty good. Uh, and I think it was their best, you know, last tour, yeah. I think. Well, with with yeah. the Rafa, we saw yeah. a player in Hellfest last time. It was brilliant. It was raining a little bit. I love them. Wow. I love them. Awesome. And after that, I saw <laughs> the same tour, but in uh, in, sep in September, October of, of 19, uh, 2019 in Rock in Rio, you know, in Brazil. And they play in the second stage without fire, mm. without nothing you crazy. know crazy what's the fuck i don't know it, it, it was in the same night uh, to play with the iron maiden show and i was you know believing that it, it was slayer and then iron maiden or something no different stages wow crazy uh, but it was pretty good the the european tour or the european leg of that tour than that show i i, I was thinking that it was be something like you know Wow, full of uh, fireworks and whatever, you know, Rock in Rio is like 3,000, 300,000 people. No, ah, fuck. no, no, no. Hellfest was the best from Slayer for me, you know. Yeah. I saw them on the last tour, I remember. Yeah. Like I was just arriving the same day to Budapest again after a long trip. I just made it in time to the concert. I saw like, I walked in, Okay, let's take it calmly. Let's get up tomorrow morning and stuff. You know, I just made it in time. Um, didn't prepare really close wise. Otherwise, two songs in. I was in the pit. I was completely messed up. I had to sync my phone somehow. Across <laughs> the start in the pit. I just lost them. I just lost them. I, in general, I'm more on the, on the death uh, side and on the, on the lower tunes. Um, but yeah, just they're just legends. They're just awesome. Mainly for rain and blood. I remember when I put that album on when I was young, uh, I didn't really understand fuck, but it was 28 minutes, what, like a train through your brain, you know, like, <laughs> walked out one side, came out the other side, what the fuck was that? I saw it, you know, it's just, yeah. it's just that shit, so. Cool. I remember that record here in Spain, it was uh, quite expensive, it was like, uh, like a new record, uh, I don't know if it was import, but I remember that we didn't bought that, the, our friends, because it was only 28 minutes. So it was like, hey, for the, same, for the same amount of money, you can have Metallica or Megadeth and it's longer. And suddenly yeah, yeah. we decided, okay, let's pick it. And it was like, oh, fuck. It's crazy. But also, yeah, yeah. I, would, also I would say that uh, when you talk to some Slayer fans, we all love Raining Blood, yeah. but I think there's a lot of underrated albums in Slayer career because there's yeah. a lot yeah. of people that is not very fan of Slayer because they think all is the same. And, yeah. and I disagree. I, I mean, Seasons in the Abyss is quite different. Yeah. I mean, and it's very good. Yeah, I, I love that it's album. You know, Crazy. It's crazy, that I album. I think the first album that I bought when I was a teenager was Diabolus and Musica. Um, That's a good And I, I, fuck, I, I, lo I like that. I love that, man. Like the first three, four songs is fucking pretty cool. And then I got into the older shit after that. But, yes. you know, I still sometimes put that album on and it kind of takes me back to when I was a teenager. You know, that kind of nostalgic kind of feeling. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. And they knew how to be creepy with the cover and everything was Slayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a cool cover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, fuck this. Oh, that, that yeah. because you love to have the, the vinyl, you know, all the production, yeah, yeah. the, the pics yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and the lyrics and whatever. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Different kind of art, you know, not just music. Oh, and, and even in the 19s, the CDs were were good enough they have a booklet you can read it and you can listen to the music while reading it i, I really hate that um, spotify thing uh, mm. 
I think that you can find the music that they put you, yeah. they put okay. in your in front of you, and no cover, no not that ritual of going to the shop and buying it and yeah, yeah. yeah. until I, I'm missing yeah. that a lot. Going to buy a yeah. record, you know, I, I'm a yeah. quite big fan of uh, King Diamond, and I was remember 1995. It was this album, not this live album, but this album is lullaby. quite underrated, I think, from that year. And, and but I I love the you know the the art of this all this stuff. So yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Production picks and whatever. Mm. Uh, I love this. It's not just hear music, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Experience, and then I want to go yeah. and, and see. I see them live because I don't know if yeah, yeah. so good as the album, or yeah, yeah. better, even better, you know, than the album. Mm. Something like that. That that's my experience, I think. So well, time to relax. That was okay, good. guys. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was fun. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Let's do it again. Let's do it. Let's repeat it in a week again. It's 1995. Yeah, yeah. You're 95. You, let's let's pick three records from that yeah, year. A podium, a podium. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Go, right. go a, trilogy, a trilogy. Yeah, a trilogy yeah, yeah. from yeah. 95. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's our, our next talk, guys. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Nice to, awesome to, to nice to meet you, Nice to meet you, Rafa. Yeah, nice to meet you, Max. It was a real pleasure. Yeah. Yeah.